Let's talk housing. It's one part of the economy where high interest rates are certainly being felt. Philadelphia Fed President Patrick Harker saying today those elevated rates are raising borrowing costs and limiting inventory, leading to higher prices and roadblocks for first-time home buyers. The average mortgage rate is around 7.57%. That's according to Freddie Mac. It's the highest since late 2000. That's for a 30-year fixed. Joining us now is Matt Ishbia, chairman and CEO of UWM, United Wholesale Mortgage. He is also owner of the Phoenix Suns and Mercury. Matt, it's great to be speaking with you again. And that is exactly where I want to start with you. The fact that we have this logjam between home prices that are still stubbornly high, mortgage rates that we've seen pick up to two decade plus highs, and then inventory that's also at historic lows. Yeah, no, it's obviously interesting to see all this stuff happen together. But what I would say a little differently than some people is like people are thinking that people aren't buying houses still. There's a lot of houses for sale and a lot of people are buying them. First time home buyers. People are some people are realizing like, wait, if I wait till rates come down, well, if, uh, more supply. Well, well, guess what? The prices will go up even more. Right now is actually a great time to buy. You lock in your rate, your 30 year fix. You know, yeah, it's high rates. Rates are higher than they were before. They're not 3 percent anymore, but seven and a half, seven point five, seven point two five, whatever they may be. You got to go to a mortgage broker. They'll find the right deal for you. But the truth is. It's a good time to buy right now. There is inventory out there, and there's a lot of young people buying houses right now. So we're seeing houses move, maybe not as fast as we've seen in the past, but it's still been pretty busy for us. It's interesting to hear you say that. I realize you're in a quiet period right now, but it's interesting to hear you saying that because we, we have seen last month is a good example with Mortgage Brokers Association saying mortgage demand was at its lowest level since 1996. You're not seeing that? Uh, definitely not since 1996. No, we had a great second quarter, all-time purchase second quarter, and third quarter was not far behind. There's a great quarter as well. And so I'd say it's definitely not the boom of 2020 and 21, but the reality is people are buying houses, people need mortgages, and the people that are the best at that, which are mortgage brokers, are still pretty busy, and we're the best lender for the mortgage brokers, and that's why we've been pretty busy throughout. Now, it's going to get slower in the fourth quarter and first quarter, and if rates are 7.5%, 8%, of course it's slower, but it's not like nothing's going on out there. I think people overstated a little bit, although it's slower. It's not dead out there. Okay. I mean, we're in the midst of bank earnings right now as well. And of course, there's been this focus for months now on, on credit tightening and, and standards for credit tightening where the banks and, and, and uh, those more, I guess, traditional lenders are concerned. Has that been a boon for you? No, it's not been a boon. It, the, the only thing that's a boon for us is people need, like, mortgages are a weird thing. If you're buying a house, you need a mortgage. You don't want one, you need one. And so you got to make it faster, easier, and cheaper. And when you're a specialist, like mortgage brokers and UWM is, we're actually the ones people go to. And so banks do great things in a lot of respect, but they're doing so many things. And so we only focus on one thing, which is mortgages. And we try to make it fastest, easiest, and cheapest. And that's what we're all about. So it's not a boon for us that other people are, but we're just focused on it. That's all we do, 7,000 people. How do we make this faster, easier, and cheaper for consumers? And that's what we focus on. We were just talking about, um, you know, the Fed and, and this ongoing message, this drumbeat of higher for longer. How does that affect housing if you see that continue to stretch out, even as inflation comes down into next year? You know, so... I don't really see that how it go, is how it's going to go. I think by the election next year, rates will drop. Is my personal perspective. Um, do I have great data behind it? Not really. Uh, besides a lot of different things that I've read and looked at and researched on. But with that being said, if it stays higher for longer, that's fine. People are still buying houses, and the best thing is when the rates do drop because they are going to drop. Whether it goes from seven and a half to six and a half, or seven and a half to six and a quarter, at some point they drop. All these people that are buying houses are going to refinance and are going to save more money, which then helps the economy, helps spur positive things. It's like there's a lot of good things happening. And so I, I, people kept saying, if you remember last year, they're saying housing values are going to crash. The whole world's going to fall apart. Well, housing values went up again, 3%, like we said they would go up a normal amount, maybe not 15%. So a lot of doom and gloom out there. It's just not reality if you're really in the weeds of the business like we try to stay.